Hey, what's up? Welcome to my channel. Tonight we're watching Band of Brothers episode 8, The Last Patrol. I just finished watching episode 7 maybe about 30 minutes ago. Usually I only watch one episode at a time with this series, but I just want to see what happens next. And in the previous episode, things got really intense. You guys told me that things would get intense, but I was not prepared for the amount of intense that we saw. I just can't get that image of Joe and Garnier out of my head and yeah, let's not think about that. All the people that they lost in that episode, all the friends that they lost and everything. It was such a brutal episode. I can't get over how Hubler accidentally shot himself with the Luger. He was so happy just a couple minutes ago, showing off his Luger to everybody and then he just shot himself and he died. Usually when you get shot in the leg, you survive. And I kept thinking he would survive, but he shot himself in an artery and he didn't make it. And oh my god, this whole episode was... <sighs> Buck, I really felt awful every time we see that scene in the intro when Buck is removing his helmet. Uh, I've been waiting to see that scene from the first episode, from the very first time I saw that intro and I knew with the look on his face I knew that it was something devastating that he saw and you guys told me that this episode would make me cry but nothing could have prepared me for that that Joe and Garnier lying on the ground with their legs blown off. Oh, okay. Let's let's get to this episode. By the end of the episode, Spears was the commanding officer of Easy Company, I think. And they are going where are they going? And they are going someplace else now. That was one good thing in that episode that by the end they had a good leader again because Dyke was really failing as a commanding officer. So I do want to see, because I know Spears is really amazing. He, is, he has been very intimidating every single time that they've talked about him on the show. It's very intimidating, you know, that this is the person that you would fear and respect. And then he was really amazing as a leader in the last couple of minutes in that episode. So yeah, I do want to see him more and I don't really know what the last patrol means. It sounds scary, so let's find out what that's about and without any delay, let's just get right into it. Oh. <sighs> we had lost some uh, very good men there. Six, seven of them were real close friends of mine. I wanted to go look at him, and I said, no, I wouldn't be able to stand that, so I, I didn't go look at him. I believe I might be able to live through it, so walk carefully. February 9th. <sighs> They've been through hell on earth, and we're now pulling into the comparative paradise of Hagenau. I had missed Bastone. When I was finally able to rejoin Easy Company, they looked nothing like the heroes who had just helped win the war. They've been through hell. Battle of Bulge was in January. Now this is February. This is a month later. My name's David Webster. I just got back from the hospital. Good for you. Hubler, where's he? Hey, guys. Some lieutenant told me to report to second. I guess you didn't hear. No, what's that? Make a malarkey, lieutenant. He's on the fast track now. Okay. Must have liked that hospital. It's, uh... We left Holland four months ago. It's funny, because Popeye found a way. So did Allie, right? Back in Holland. And Garnier. And... Yeah, where is Garnier? Buddy, you missed out on a lot. Right, spread out! Hold along this line! Are they pissed off because he was not in Beston? Why don't you go talk to Captain Spears? Make sure he wants you with us. Captain Spears? What happened to Captain Winters? You missed out on a lot. The guys I knew were either gone or very different from what I remembered. Because I had missed Bastone, I was treated as a replacement and felt like I was starting all over again. What are you sorry about? He's alive, he's got a couch, goddamn blanket, snug as a bug. Yeah. Uh, Sergeant Malarkey said to check with the CO if I should be in 2nd platoon. Have a seat, Webster. We'll get you situated. 
How long have you uh, been sick? Long enough. Lonia. Had to be a full moon. It's gonna leave the patrol exposed. You know what you're gonna do for this? I ain't let Spears handle it. Right. Regiment wants patrol for prisoners. This one comes straight from Colonel Sink. You can have 15 men. Think very hard about who you want to lead the patrol. Okay, that's the patrol we were talking about in the title. When'd you graduate? June 6th, D day, yes, sir. Sir, I'd like to volunteer for the patrol. Whenever someone volunteers, it doesn't go really well. No, you have an experience. Lieutenant Foley told me to go to second, but Sergeant Malarkey said- Fine, second. Take, uh, Lieutenant Jones. Are there other officers in the platoon? No, sir. Shit! Shit! No! 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 We get to see from the outside perspective just how much Beston really affected everybody. How different they are from the people they were before they went there. Sergeant, this is Lieutenant Jones, just assigned to 2nd Platoon. 15. 15 what? Louis, since D-Day. What do you know about this patrol thing? Uh, nothing. Is he not allowed to tell them what he knows? I said let the kid go. He could use the experience. Probably could find 14 replacements to help him out. Yeah, we dodged some mortars on our way in. Mm. Why are you holding out me? I know you know. Just give us the names, Webb. Who? Well, if I tell you, you can't let on that you know. I'll tell him. I just need Listen to... Listen up! Know. Yeah, we've just fucking heard. Webster here told us. All right, let's move! Clear it out! Oh, move! Oh. Move! Come on, come on, come on, <laughs> Because of Webster mainly, because he was with these guys before, we get to see just how much they've changed. Oh no. I was on my way back. Bill Keane, a Tacoa man, was killed because he was carrying a sack of potatoes from one building into another. Yeah, he was just talking about... Hey, let's go. Let's get out of here. Yeah. Did you know him well? No. Not really. Well, he doesn't recognize anybody he knew. They're all very different from who they were before. All right, I'm leading this patrol. Is there anyone you don't want from second? Please like her up. That list sounds like everybody to me. Can't believe they're gonna make Malachi lead it. <laughs> Christ, he only lost his five best friends. What the fuck's he got to look for? You can see how much of a toll it took on him too. He is so different from who he was in the beginning. Sergeant Malarkey is really in no condition to be on this patrol. And maybe if you offered, you could go in his place. He's telling me that's not going to cause any trouble. Don Malarkey had been on the front lines every time Easy Company had seen action since D-Day. If it was possible for them to switch places for the patrol, it would be a small moment of justice. Malarkey really needs some rest, and all of them, everybody, they all need some rest. Oh, Hershey bars! Jesus Christ. We can turn them. Yeah, who are they for? They're not you, Oh, Wait. come on. As long as you keep your hands off my ass, I'll be fine. Have a Hershey's. Yeah, thanks. Hey, you hey, guys are fucking Hershey bar. Well, he got shot in the ass. <laughs> hey, can you believe this guy? Try to get him out of the fucking way, come straight back. Did you hear what happened on D Company's patrol last night? What? Replacement lieutenant blew his foot off, stepped on his shoe mine. Oh, man. Hey, Webb, you come with me. Yeah. Sergeant, this cat spear is going to be where you're headed. Uh, same vicinity, yeah. All right, then I'll join you. Come on, you don't even smoke cigarettes, damn it! Hey, come on, I got a wounded ass! I think just how they all keep coming back from the hospital, like Frank just came back, and Bill found a way to come back, everybody. Maybe that's why they look at Webster like that, because he took his full time you're not going to leave that patrol, Lieutenant Jones. The hospital and everything else. He didn't come to Beston. It looks like Sergeant Malarkey could use a break, sir. I've discussed it with him, and he said that he did not mind if I took his place on the patrol. I'd really like to be on that patrol, sir. Absolutely. So who do you have in mind leading this thing, if not Malarkey? Come on. You can't be leading. Not on his first day. He's the new guy, just like... That guy was saying in the previous episode, they've known each other for so long, they've been through all of these things together. How do you come in and command respect from these heroes? How do you make them believe that you can be a leader? Yeah, that's a tough job. I kind of feel bad for him.
Well, if he ain't, it's you, Chuck. Or Shifty or Mo. And that'd be better. Lieutenant Jones here. He's the ranking officer. And he'll be along as an observer. Sergeant Martin here will lead the patrol. Wanted destroyed, so you have to lay some demo on a time delay. You have to move fast. Don't pop the first thing that moves. Yes, they want prisoners. You speak German, right, Webster? Yeah, a little bit. German's as good as mine. Webster, just make sure we got nice to get out of everything. Whatever. Yeah, they're all looking down on him because he was in a best dog. You want to sit this one out? Yes, sir. Martin, you want to supervise? Buddy. Nothing rattles, nothing shines, no helmets. No helmets. You set for tonight? I'm ready. Those crowds are gonna catch some hell. Getting back safely could be successfully accomplished in as little as 10 minutes. Is it going to go smoothly or is it going to go really wrong? I don't want them to die. Go move up. Take Grant and Hefron. Secure the right perimeter and the crossroads. Clear? Oh, what is that? Jackson, wait! Jackson, wait! Oh, mine. Jackson! Oh, man. Jackson, take care of him! Jackson, oh, my God. The wounded crowd! Hey, Buster! Tell him! Bring the wounded man! Everybody moves out of my command! Are you ready? Are you ready? After this, they would stop looking down at Webster because he is really making sure that everybody else is okay. Jesus Christ, come on, blow the goddamn whistle! Get in the boat! Keep moving! Come on, get in the boat! Come on! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Where is the lieutenant? Jackson is not okay. Okay, medics here. Okay, move, move. Jackson, take it easy. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> okay. Light, I need some light. <laughs> Alright, let's get him out of here. Let's get him out of here. I don't want to die. I don't want to die. It's okay. Take it easy. Oh, right? oh, it's okay. Hey, it's okay. It's alright. It's alright. Jackson! Oh, man. Eugene Jackson was 20 years old. Oh, man. In fact, Eugene lost his life on a stretcher in a dank basement in Hagenau. He was just one more casualty in a war that was supposed to be all but over. It's just February 2nd. It's, what, seven months before the war is over? Get up in the truck. Up, up. He died of his wounds, sir. So crazy. It was just because he walked in two seconds earlier than he was supposed to. Just the tiniest, tiniest mistake means you can lose your life. Jackson's dead. Yeah, we heard. Yeah, well, they want another patrol tonight. 
They want more prisoners. You leave someone in the bank? It's the third prisoner that was too far gone to bring back. Oh, he's still there? I can't listen to it anymore. Oh, man. Are you drunk, trooper? Leave me alone. Sick and tired of fucking patrols. Taking orders. Hey, come. Shut up. Without previous episode, everything that happened in Beston, that was the breaking point for everybody. They're just done with it. Well, Hitler's favorite color, I don't know, none of it gets us across the river. He gave him a successful patrol, now he wants to. Successful. Y'all did a damn fine job on a tough mission last night. Well, I wish you good luck tonight, because I'd be expecting more of the same. So I'll brief him now, sir? You no. gonna do it? No, I'll do it. You men did an excellent job last night. I'm proud. I just saw Colonel Sink. He's proud, too. In fact, he's so proud, he wants you to do another patrol across the river tonight. We'd have to venture farther into town this time, so we'll be setting off from the same place we did last night. We're not changing the plan any, sir. Is it a good thing or a bad thing? Because the Germans know where they came in from and went out from. I want you all to get a full night's sleep tonight. Which means in the morning, you will report to me that you made it across the river. Oh, man. I love this guy so much. So, so much. Understand? Sir. Sir. <laughs> <laughs> moving off the line. <laughs> that was the last patrol. Now they're moving off the line. Don't bother writing this up. I'll take care of it. Might actually enjoy it. Okay. I think you might be honest. Dan Jones. Sir, join us at the company CP. Where is CP? Yeah. Battlefield Commission is a second lieutenant. What do we have here, boys? Hey, pal. Congratulations, Corbett. Regiment has seen fit to promote you to first lieutenant. Right. Guess you lost another platoon leader, huh, Whip? Word was Captain Nixon wrote up a bogus report and regiment never got wise. Hmm. And we all might make it home alive. Like the guy was saying in the beginning, you start feeling that you might make it back, you might make it through this war. You got a star? Oak leaves? Congratulations, Major. They have accepted him now. Things were already beginning to look like peacetime. The standard of living was on the rise. How could anyone ever know of the price paid by soldiers in terror, agony, and bloodshed? Now they would be entering Germany. That last line. Now soon they would be entering Germany explained a lot to me. Because I was thinking, what did it mean, moving out the line, where are they going next? Because the war would not be over for quite some time right now. I really, 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 really love winners so much. And it's very, very clear to see why everybody in Easy respects him so much. He is such a good leader. He's always been such a good leader. And he does not like to put his men in danger for no reason, for no absolute reason, and it was really great what he did in the end, not sending them on that second patrol, because he knew it was so unnecessary. They probably were not gonna get any more information than they did from the two prisoners that they caught in the first patrol. And it would have been so much risky, because I was thinking I mean, I don't know much about battles, so I'm not gonna say I know anything. But if you're using the same route to go into the enemy territory and do the exact same thing that you did the previous night, you would think that they would be on the lookout for it the next night. Just because you change the time a little bit doesn't really make that much of a difference. I. I think they would be better prepared the next night. They would be more attentive. So I think the second patrol would have been even more dangerous than the first one. And they would have lost a lot of guys in that second patrol. So it's 
really happy that he cancelled that, that he decided to just lie about it. With Webster, he was with these guys from the very beginning. He was with them in Normandy and then in Holland. But then he was hospitalized and he seemed in a pretty good shape. He seemed really well now and he joined Easy again. But he wasn't there in Beston and Bill came back from the hospital. Peacock came back, I think. Joe Toy, he came back. They, they all came back. Even when they did not have to, they could have just sat that one out, but they all came back. So I think that's why they were looking down at him, that he didn't even try to come back, because in their minds he could have if he wanted to. I don't know, maybe he could have if he wanted to. Although I totally understand that he did not. They were looking down on him because of that. And Beston, we saw how terrible Beston was and it really changed these guys so much. Beston was hell and they're totally different people than they were when they went, went in there. So for Webster, when he came back, first of all, they're all looking down at him for not being in Beston with everybody else and because of what they experienced in Beston. It's just, it feels, to him it felt like he didn't know them at all, like he said, he felt like a replacement. Him being there, him experiencing, him feeling like an outsider in a group of people who he knew so well, just not, not that long ago, it just shows you just how much they changed in Best On. But he was really a stand-up guy, first of all, he told them that they had 16 people, two translators, they only needed 15, got that other translator out of the patrol team, so he didn't have to go on patrol. And then there, to, when they were coming back, he was sending other guys, covering fire for them. And yeah, he was just really good there. He earned their respect, they welcomed him back by the end of the episode, and that was really nice. I feel terrible about Jackson, it's just, again, so crazy that the tiniest, tiniest mistake can cost you your life. If just, he was just a couple seconds early and that meant he lost his life. <sighs> Not even a quick painless death, it was painful for him and it was torturous for everybody else who were just looking at him helplessly trying to help him but there is nothing that they can actually do and him screaming I don't want to die just before he died and the other German guy the prisoner who was injured in that blast with Jackson who they left by the river the next day in in the morning he was still screaming he must have been in so much pain too. It's awful, just so, so awful. D-Day was 6th June and this is February. And they've been through so much in these months. And now they're going to be in Germany in the next episode. Seeing Malarkey really broke my heart too because again, best on, they were they went through so much and Malarkey lost so many of his friends in Beston and, and his friends got injured, his friends died. <sighs> They're so frustrated. They're all so frustrated. Who wouldn't be? This war went on for so long. <sighs> and these guys are right in the middle of it, right in the heat of this from day one. They've been in the front fighting through the worst of it and they just want it to be over now. I want it to be over. There are still two more episodes left. I was scared of the last patrol. I thought the last patrol meant so many of the men from Easy would die. Thankfully that's not what it meant and that I'm really glad about. And thank you so much again for watching this with me. 
If you enjoyed the video, please go ahead, like and subscribe, turn on the notification bell and I'll see you soon.